What's going on guys? Welcome back to my first video of the um, new season and everything that's going on. Obviously we're still just for, oh, for Forest a week into pre-season. We started last Monday. It's now Monday the 1st of July, the day of recording this and probably the day I'm going to upload it if I've got enough time to upload it. So yeah, I did have another video planned. That will be coming out in the next so many days. And um, But I just feel with everything that's happened at the club over the past week or so, I've had to make this video because I just want to get my opinions across, what I think, whether you lot agree with me or not, I'm not sure, but it's just my opinion what's happened at the club over the last seven days or so, because it's all gone a bit crazy at the club, like completely and just nuts at the minute. Um, but before we get anywhere into the video, please subscribe to my channel, please, 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 I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers as quick as possible. We're only five away from 800, so just if there's... So anyone that's not watching it, anyone that's watching this video right now who's not subscribed, please subscribe. It costs nothing, it's just a simple click of a button and it honestly means so much to me. So please subscribe and like the video if you have. Comment down below also your opinion to what I'm about to say in this video and let's just get into it. Now, where do I begin? I say we begin with the first bit of news, let's let's call it, was Roy Keane left his role as assistant manager of Forest. I can't remember exactly the date. Um, it was around this time last week, I think, roughly this time. Don't quote me on that. But it was around this time that Forrest released a statement saying Roy Keane has left his role as assistant manager to go and pursue his own career. Now, reading into it and everything, he's apparently had words with O'Neill, had meetings, etc. So he did feel this halfway through his um, tenure as assistant manager that he wanted to leave and become like pursue his own management career but without res with respect to O'Neill and the club he decided to stay till the end of the season and then leave us. And I have total respect to, for, to Roy Keane for that. He could have left us halfway through and said right I'm going to do my own thing and it wouldn't have, wouldn't have really mattered but we still need an assistant manager and you can't really just been it off so far through the season so I, I respect Roy Keane for doing that and I totally give him everything good luck and everything with his own management career I'm not sure where he'll end up There's, he's been linked with a lot of jobs in League One the Championship so let's see where he goes and hopefully he does well good luck to him but that was a bit like a sucker punch to Forrest kind of yeah to be fair because it just come out of nowhere there was a no one really expected Roy Keane to turn around and say, I want my own management career, especially after just basically signing for us. I think they got the deal done in February for him, something like that. So he was literally at the club for four-ish months or something like that. So um, it wasn't long. But I respect his decision. Good luck to him in his future. Management thinks there's not much to say about that. It's just it happened. No one really expected it. And then the attention turned to who's going to be our next assistant manager. There was a lot of names being thrown in the hat, such as Chris Cohen, and I believe it should have been Chris Cohen. But then things start to not heat up, but we're just getting pictures and videos of them starting pre-season Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Just team bonding, training sessions after training session. O'Neill still as manager. Signing Sami Amiobi. Now, very hot and cold signing in my opinion whether he'll work for us or not I'm not sure not really done much in his career so far but he's a talented player when he wants to actually play um i've got people i've got friends who support the club support the clubs he used to play for and they say he's good for one game bad for 10. so let's see how we can be at forest apparently he did okay on the weekend against alfredton in the second half of the game and um yeah, good signing. An O'Neill signing. Let's be real. It's an O'Neill signing. Um, but yeah, it was linked with uh, Aaron Murich. And apparently that deal's still on. And um, that, that I, I personally think that's a great deal in my opinion. Young 20-year-old goalkeeper from Man City. Got a big future ahead of him in the game. Why not give him a go? On loan till the end of the season. Not going to really matter. But I only feel like Pep would let him come if he knew he was going to get first team football for experience so maybe there's something in the deal he has to play a certain amount of games who knows but I personally feel like that's the only way Pep would let him leave the club if he, if he was guaranteed first team football um, so yeah maybe not an O'Neill signing who knows that could be done from people higher up in the club 
So yeah, we signed Amiomi, was getting pictures and videos of them not starting pre-season. Everything was happy. Going into Alfreton on the Saturday, on the Friday, we get news at around about quarter past one-ish in the afternoon on Friday that O'Neill has left the club. Now, it is believed that he was sacked. He didn't leave the club, he was sacked because a player dispute in the changing room that happened. There was news articles everywhere on all different newspapers that it was Adin Gladiola, it was this, it was that. No one really knows what happened in that dressing room, but all I know is that the reason Forrest did sack him, in the, the, the main story is that players turned against him, went to the people that are high up at the club, complained about him, and they thought they can't really let it get on much, especially with all of pre-season to get through as well so make a decision early get rid of him bring someone else in and didn't they bring someone else in very quickly but we'll get on to that in a minute let's speak a bit more about O'Neill so O'Neill wasn't really a fan favourite well it was a very divided split when he first got appointed as manager after Ita Karanka left uh, I'd probably say it's 80 20 80 percent of fans didn't like him thought he was outdated his football He's not really been in touch with club football for a while after managing Ireland and uh, just thought it was the wrong appointment on all accounts. And um, the 20% seen him as a club legend, albeit he has total respect respect from everyone at the club, fans, players, um, board, chairman, the lot, all have respect for O'Neill. He, what he done as a player was incredible, the miracle men. But as a manager, I don't think it was the right appointment, especially at the right time after getting rid of one of our best managers in the past 10 or 20 years because we had a real chance under Karanka and when everything happened when he left, bringing O'Neill in probably wasn't the right decision. He made some okay signings in January, bringing in the likes of Milosevic and Ben Wan to help bolster our central defence problems and they've turned out good signings for us. But yeah, we got the news on Friday that O'Neill has left the club, got sacked. Um, because of a player dispute that happened, the club thought to act on it quickly, but they must have had something lined up in the past week, two weeks, maybe even month or so, that they knew O'Neill was going to get the sack, or they were going to sack O'Neill, because Sabri Lamushi, our new head coach, was appointed just 18 minutes after Forrest confirmed O'Neill's departure. Now... That is a crazy number to think of. 18 minutes it took for them to announce the things. Obviously, they was working behind the scenes for the past, I don't know how long, but it was happening behind the scenes, behind O'Neill's back. Not sure how I feel about that. Whether you, I don't really agree with going behind manager's back, whether he was doing well or not, whether there was a play dispute or not. I don't care what it was. I don't think you should go behind manager's back and appoint another people. It's just not nice. But that's how this situation unfolded at Forest. And uh, we now have ourselves a new head coach in Sabri Lamushi. Um, not really done much as a manager. He was a, a good player, apparently. Um, been around, played international, got so many caps for France. I can't remember how many it is. But, um, yeah, he's okay. Uh, quite a good player as a manager. He's managed Ivory Coast. Uh, got them to the 2014 World Cup but got sacked because of his performances in the World Cup because they didn't make the knockout stage, I don't think. So um, that's the reason he got um, sacked out of the Ivory Coast job. And then he got the Rennes job in France and he took over them when they were battling relegation in the Ligue 1, which is France's top division. And in a season, he turned them from relegation, one of the favourites to get relegated from that league, into a fifth place team and finished them in a Europa League spot and took them to Europa League football. Now he got sacked last December, I believe, because the results in the league and Europa League wasn't what the club wanted. So that's the reason he got the sacking. A lot of people think it was um, undeserved that he got sacked from Rennes because he did okay. They, like I said, he turned them from a, relegated, a relegation favourite team to a Europa League team. So he'd done quite well at Ren. And a lot of fans feel like um it wasn't deserved that he got the sack, but 
now Forrest have a situation on their hands where it's a blank canvas. Don't know much about him in his management career. Don't know about him as a draw for bringing in players. Is he going to be a top manager that someone's going to say, I want to go work with him? So who knows what's his style of play going to be? Apparently, and obviously most managers play the formation now, but his go-to formation is the 4 2 3 one which suits Forrest because we have strong plays in them positions, if you know what I mean. When we play that formation, I feel like that is our strongest formation to play with the players we have at the club. So he's coming into the he's coming into a team that he's going to inherit that he is already already has the strengths to fit his style of play. I think now we've obviously got some talent and players like Lewis Graben, Lolly, Carvalho, people like that. You get what I'm saying? He's not in inheriting a bad squad here at all. Like they finished ninth last year, had potential to go and finish in the playoffs, but things didn't work out. So um, yeah, we were at a blank canvas really. We played Alfreton on Saturday, got the two one win after going one 0 behind. Brennan Johnson, Brennan Johnson on the score sheet, and Kareem and Sarafard on the score sheet got us the win there. Um, he was in the stands watching. He will take charge tomorrow against Dundee in Spain. And he started his first training session today in Spain as the squad flew out there last night, I believe. So, um, yeah, they're going for a week-long training camp in Spain. And um, I think then they move on to Greece, come back to England, play the last couple of friendlies. And then the season starts on the 3rd of, 3rd of August against West Brom. And I think... Really, I'm not really buying into what happens in pre-season with his performances, the victories and things like that. All I'm bothered about is that 3rd of August half-five kickoff against West Brom. Who is going to be in his first lineup? Who's going to be on the bench for the for his first game? How are we going to approach the game? What is he going to change tactically if things aren't going our way in the game? If they're going right in the, right in the game, what's he going to do to keep make sure it stays that way? Who knows? It's a blank canvas. It's exciting, but also very nervous for Forest fans when we have a blank canvas like this happen with Philippe Montagnier. We just didn't know what to expect, and um, it's just another one of those situations. We support the club, for, uh, fans do. We don't support the players um, or anything like that. We support the club, and he is the manager of Nottingham Forest, so we have to support him. Whether you like it or not, the decision, what happened over the past three, four days... You have to support Sabi Lamushi and put all your support into him because he's going to need it. It's a hard division he's coming into and um, if he's not fully prepared or fully backed then we'll get romped over in this league, trust me on that. So um, yeah, I feel like we all need to put our trust into Sabri Lamushi and hope for the best. Maybe he brings in some more signings, who knows. But that's going to do it for the end of the video. If you enjoyed then drop a like below, subscribe if you haven't. Like I said, we're about that. We I really want to hit 1,000 subscribers as quick as possible. It would mean the world to me. It costs nothing. Free. A hit of that button means so much to me. And hit a like on the video if you enjoyed the video. Also, drop your comments down below of what I've been speaking about, the O'Neill situation, the Keane situation, and what your thoughts are on our new head coach, Sabri Lamushi. And until then, see ya.